What's going on YouTube? So of course Honda has a number of well-known and very popular products, but none of them are as important as the model I'm standing next to right now, the Honda CR-V. This of course is Honda's best-selling model, but not only that, it's also competing in the compact crossover segment, which is one of the hottest and fastest growing segments in the US. Because of all this, you know Honda was going to take a redesign very seriously. And they've invited me up to Detroit today to take a first look at this all new sixth generation model, which has been totally redone from the ground up. So has this improved the formula of this family favorite? Let's go ahead and find out. All right, guys, so let's dive right in here by first kind of talking about how this new CRV is structured in general because it's quite a bit different than the outgoing generation. So Honda's actually launching this model with four trim levels. You're gonna have two models that are the gas powered models and two models that are hybrid powered models. So off to the side of me, we have the EX trim level. That is going to become the base trim level of the CRV, and you also have EXL as the other available offering for the gas powered model. And then off to the uh, left hand side of me is the uh, sport touring model. That is going to be the new top model of the CRV lineup. And additionally, you can also get this in a sport trim level as well. And I'm going to talk all about the powertrain situation, of course, later on in the video. But before we talk about the powertrain stuff, of course, let's talk about the new design because obviously it is substantially different from the outgoing model. One of the things that I noticed looking at it here in person, first and foremost, is just how much sportier and also how much more of a kind of rugged design that this model has. So like I mentioned earlier, this is the sport touring trim level. So this is the fully loaded model. And when you choose this uh, version, you're going to get a little bit of a more tough design. So you'll notice down here, for instance, in your lower fascia, we have some additional elements that are not present on that EX or EXL over there on the other side of me. Uh, that's just gonna give it a little bit of a tougher look. The CRV itself looks visually substantially wider than the outgoing generation, and it is actually 0.4 inches wider than that outgoing generation. Now, if you're looking here at the grill, you'll notice it has a kind of squared off tough look. This is kind of passport inspired, um, which you can definitely see in the way that it's shaped. Um, in terms of the finish itself, we've got the full gloss black with this mesh look here with the Sport Touring model. The Sport and Sport Touring models will also get this gloss black accent that's gonna run across the top of the grill. And if you choose one of the, the EX or the EXL trim level, that's gonna be finished in a chrome instead. Now, of course, the other really important element of this brand new exterior design are your headlights. So we have very clean and classy looking full LED headlights that's gonna run across the entire lineup of the CRVs. And as you can see, you do have the reflector beam style right through there. You've got the daytime running light, which is going to run uh, right around through there as well as your LED turn signal indicator. Like I said, it has a really clean, classy and sophisticated design, uh, just like what we've seen recently with some of their products like Civic and HRV. Now, looking at the bottom, though, you'll notice uh, there are no fog lights, um, and this is the fully loaded model, so we can assume that they're not going to be available on this new generation of the CRV. But let's go ahead real quick and take a look at the EX trim level as well. Um, like I was saying, EX is going to become the base trim level of the next generation CRV. So as you can see, you actually do keep pretty much the same design mostly. Um, it definitely looks uh, very clean and sophisticated as well, just like with the Sport Touring, but the lower fascia is really the thing that's the most substantially different, just a little bit smoother and less rugged looking. Next up, let's go ahead and take a look at our wheel options. So since there's no longer an LX trim level, we're actually gonna start out with 18 inch alloys. Um, when you choose a Sport trim level, that's where you'll get the gloss black finish. And here with the Sport Touring model, we have 
the gloss black 19 inch alloys which are of course going to be the biggest option available with this new crv then of course as we come up here to our mirrors you're going to find standard blind spot monitoring most of the models are going to have uh, the body color finish but we do have the gloss black finish to match all the other gloss black accents here on the sports touring model now as we come around to the side here you're going to notice several things about this new model one of the most pronounced in my opinion is the fact that the a pillar has actually moved back 4.7 inches from where it was on the previous generation so when you look at the side as a whole it really gives this so much more of a uh, sophisticated proportion uh, you've got that longer hood which is stretched out and just makes this vehicle look a lot more substantial than i think any other crv in the past ever has now in terms of your overall length this vehicle itself has grown 2.7 inches um, so you've got a decent amount of additional space on board which we'll talk about of course when we get to the inside that's what a lot of people are going to want to know about now let's carry on to the rear design. So you're gonna notice a lot of nice elements here when I get out of the way. Um, again, uh, Honda has really ca kind of kept with a theme of making things not revolutionarily different. Um, you still got signature CRV elements like the vertical taillights, but everything is really a lot cleaner, more sophisticated looking. Let's talk about those headlights, or taillights, excuse me. So as you can see, uh, you've got that vertical design. It kind of bends down here. All the models are going to have the LED elements. Uh, it looks like the turn signal is going to be incandescent, however. But like I said, really reminds you that it uh, carries on that CRV lineage. Also kind of looks like a Volvo, but that's a good thing to have inspiration from. Now beyond the tail lights, you will notice you've got your rear wiper mounted right here. We also have a nice gloss black finish for the spoiler here on the Sport Touring, as well as gloss black on the uh, shark fin antenna and our roof rails. Now as we move down, you'll see your Sport Touring branding. And then down here at the lower air elements, this is an important area I wanna talk about because I know a lot of you guys, including myself, really appreciate when we have a rear diffuser area that has the integrated exhaust pipe. So if you want that, you're gonna have to go for the Sport of the Sport Touring with the hybrid powertrain. So it's kind of almost the opposite of what some of the other brands have done. The hybrid models are actually the ones that have the ex exposed exhaust pipes, which I think really makes this rear design look quite nice. Also, the Sport Touring is gonna come with this uh, kind of gray finish accent down on the lower areas as well. One other thing about the hybrid model is you can now tow 1,000 pounds with the hybrid model, where previously on the last generation you couldn't tow at all with the hybrid model. Now, of course, when it comes to a compact family crossover, safety is paramount. And Honda will continue to give their entire Honda Safety Sense suite of safety features as standard equipment. So that's going to give you your adaptive cruise with traffic jam assist, auto high beam headlights, lane keeping assist, um, as well as your forward emergency braking with pedestrian detection, now with improved cameras and radars to make them even more reliable than they were before. And then of course, in terms of your warranty, that will continue to be Honda's signature three year, 36,000 mile and five year, 60,000 mile powertrain warranty options. But anyways, guys, that's it for this all new exterior design, but there's still a lot of really exciting things to show you in the interior. So let's go ahead and get to that. All right, guys, let's go ahead and climb inside of this all new CRV's interior. Um, I have to say, First impression, uh, really, really nice space, as has been the case with a lot of the recent Honda interiors. They've really done a great job of making things uh, nice and sophisticated and very premium looking. But I'll go ahead and let my cameraman go into the back seat and give you guys a real nice view of the entire interior, and we'll go ahead and talk about all the features as well. Now, before I get into all the specifics, let's go ahead and take a look at our key fob. As you can see, we do have that new design for the Honda brand, nice, small, and compact with remote start built into the fob itself. And then let's talk about um, some of the stuff with the interior, specifically with the seats. So Honda says these are a new next generation seat 
with body stabilizing ability. So it's supposed to be very, very comfortable on a long trip. Of course, we'll test that out later on. But in terms of the seats themselves and your materials, you're going to be looking at cloth or leather. So it's going to be cloth on your EX trim level and your sport trim level. If you choose the EXL or the sport touring, which is the model we're setting in right now, that's going to get you the leather. And we also have the choice between black and gray. As you can see, this is the black option with the orange color contrast stitching, which you'll see in the seats, as well as some other elements inside of the cabin itself. But let's talk about the cabin as a whole and the materials. Like I said, a very upscale and sophisticated design. You notice a lot of elements that kind of started with the Civic, went to the HRV, and now we're seeing here with the CRV. So in terms of those materials, we're gonna be looking at a nice soft touch upper dashboard that runs all through here. Here in the middle, we've got this nice looking faux aluminum as well as these gloss black accents that run throughout. That's gonna be included with the sport touring model. And then you've got that signature uh, single vent effect, which uh, basically just runs all the way across there with the kind of nice mesh design. Looks clean and classy. And as we move down into the center area, uh, this is going to be a hard touch plastic, but everything in here, even in this early pre-production model, feels extremely solid and well put together. In terms of the door trims, um, you're going to see those same kinds of materials reflected up here. So like I said, this is the fully loaded model. So we've got the leather across the armrest, the stitching details, gloss black accents. We've got the two-person memory seating as well as nice padding along the top and that uh, faux aluminum accent. All four of the windows are also going to be one touch automatic. Now, as we look around at some of the other elements inside of the cabin, one of the big upgrades of this new model is going to be in terms of technology. So one of the first things I notice with the upgrades is going to be your gauge cluster. So we've got that new gauge cluster we've seen on many of the recent Honda products, which is going to be a seven inch digital display on the left side and then an analog display on the right side. This is going to be fully customizable for whatever kinds of information that you uh, need to pull up just like it is in any of the other Honda models. Um, I'm not noticing any head-up display here on a full, the fully loaded model but as we come back to the steering wheel we do have the newest version of the Honda steering wheel. We've got steering wheel heating. Uh, we also have rain sensing wipers again since this is the fully loaded model and the wheel itself is going to be manual tilt and telescoping. But you're probably wondering how is storage because CRV has long been basically the king of interior storage. And this new model actually kind of takes a different approach. You definitely have a lot of storage, but the design itself is a lot more traditional than that previous generation where it had all the different folding mechanisms and things going on in this console area. Instead, we have a more traditional center console. So opening it up, we'll take a look inside. Honda says this is the largest center console in the class, and I believe it looking at it. It's very deep. You have a nice felt lining down there at the bottom. We also have another little storage cubby right there and so two really deep uh, cup holders. And then of course, you've got this really large storage area in the very front here. And this area is also going to double as your wireless phone charging pad for your EXL as well as your sport touring models. But like I said, overall, this has a more traditional look to it, including with the shifter. So you'll notice that uh, with the previous generation, of course, you kind of had the shifter that was mounted up on the uh, dashboard a little bit. This is in a more traditional location. It is a physical shifter. Um, even though this is the hybrid model, we actually don't have the push button style like you have on the Hi Honda Accord hybrid. Um, so a lot of you guys actually will appreciate that. It's a little bit of simpler and you don't have to get used to it. Next to that, we also have our drive mode controllers. We have hill descent control, which is a first for a Honda CRV. And then we have our electronic parking brake as well as our brake hold function. Now, as we rise on up here, as other things to look at, uh, we've got a USB-C, USB-A, and a 12 volt outlet located right there. And then in terms of our climate controls, we've got those lovely knobs that I really love in all the recent Hondas. Really great clicky sound, uh, very Audi-esque in the way that they operate overall. As you can see on this model, it is gonna be dual zone automatic. Um, and we do also have the three-stage heated seats. You'll notice though, even though this is a fully loaded model, we don't have ventilated seats. So uh, some of the rivals do offer ventilated seats on, as an available option on the top end models. 
And let's go ahead and talk about two more pieces of technology which have been upgraded totally inside of the next generation CRV. Um, first of all, let's talk about the audio system. So with the Sport Touring, the fully loaded model, you have a 12 speaker Bose Centerpoint sound system. That's the first time we have a branded sound system here on the CRV, um, just following in the footsteps, just like the Honda Civic. And I'm not gonna be able to give you guys a sound sample today, but of course, having that branded sound system is gonna give you that extra powerful option if you choose to spring for the top end model. Now, in terms of the display itself, this of course has been completely upgraded. What you're looking at here is the nine inch display. This is gonna come on the EXL as well as the Sport Touring models. Um, this has the latest version of the Honda Link software. And what's important when you choose to have this uh, version is the fact that you get wireless Android Auto and wireless Apple CarPlay. Now when you choose the EX or the Sport trim levels, those are gonna come with a smaller seven inch display. And when you have that, that's gonna have wired Android Auto and wired Apple CarPlay. And wrapping up the interior here, or the front of the interior rather, uh, we do have an auto dimming mirror right there at the top. And also we have a power sunroof. Uh, one thing I am noticing though is this is not a panoramic sunroof, um, even though this is the fully loaded model. And of course a lot in this segment do offer the panoramic sunroof at this point. And let's go ahead and get into the rear seat, which of course, very, very important for a family crossover. One of the things I'm observing as I get in is the door is open full 90 degrees. So that's gonna be excellent for loading in car seats and things like that, all the things that your family is going to need. Now, wow, setting back here, really impressed. I expected to be impressed because the current CRV is already humongous and this is actually 0.6 inches larger so that would put the rear legroom at 41 inches uh, which like i said is enormous for this segment that's my driving position at 5 8 and as you can see i'm an adult and i stretched completely out here uh, and my i have tons of space underneath the seat as well for my feet to move around so this is incredibly incredibly comfortable. And that's before I get into the seats themselves. They're obviously very soft as, uh, as you'd expect, but one of the big things about this seat is that we now have eight different levels of reclining ability. So if I grab this little handle here, look how far back we can go. I can go basically in like limo mode here in the Honda CRV. So this is really incredibly comfortable for this segment. And I'm very, very impressed by this. Let's go ahead and also talk about, of course, your features that you're gonna see on board. I don't know full availability of which features will be on which trim levels, but as you can see, we do have rear vents on this top model. Uh, we do also have two USB type C ports to keep your devices charged as well. And then we've got a map pocket. And then if we take a look over here at the door trim, Looks like the materials are mostly gonna follow through. They're gonna be hard touch along the top, but we still have the gloss black accents through there. We've got the leather on the armrest, a automatic window, and then we've got some bottle storage at the bottom. And let's continue on by taking a look at the cargo area. So I switched over here to the EX trim level. That's because the traditional gas powered models are gonna be slightly larger um, than the hybrid models, which you know, as you would expect, uh, so it's really a pretty small difference. But the important takeaway is that this is the largest CRV ever. You're looking at just over 39 cubic feet of space behind the second row, uh, which like I said, is bigger than even the previous generation, which is already one of the very largest offerings in the class. Now, if you're wondering about specific numbers, that's gonna be 36.3 cubic feet on the hybrid model, which is over three cubic feet more than the last generation hybrid, and a maximum of 76.5 cubic feet. That's not just larger than, that's actually significantly larger than a lot of the competition. So it's definitely something to keep in mind if you're you know, shopping between different models in the future. And I'll reach in here and fold these seats down as well and give you guys a <laughs> that was a fail it's too big i'm too short 
And I'll go ahead and fold the seats down here. That's what that's going to look like, as you can see with the seats completely folded here and with the gas powered model. You've got, of course, your spare tire, but also this storage here can adjust, and that's going to give you additional uh, availability of configurations and a little bit of additional space when you make that adjustment. On the hybrid model, of course, you're going to have the hybrid battery packs underneath of there. Now, as promised, it is time to circle back and talk about the powertrain situation. So as you know, at this point, you have the gas and the hybrid powertrains to choose from, uh, and you can choose which trim level you want depending on which one best fits your needs. Let's start out over here with the traditional gas-powered model. This is going to be using an updated version of the 1.5 liter turbo four-cylinder um, from the current generation. Power is actually going to be unchanged. It's still gonna be 190 horsepower and 179 pound-feet of torque. However, Honda says what has been updated is basically overall refinement and having less engine noise. Now, let's go over to the hybrid model. This, for a lot of you guys, will be the more exciting option because, of course, in 2022, we're moving towards a lot of hybridization, electrification, and this option here is going to be pairing a two-liter four-cylinder engine to Honda's next-generation two-motor hybrid system. Now, while we obviously don't have any fuel economy numbers for either of these two at this point, we can, of course, assume that the hybrid model will be the most efficient of the two. But I can confirm that the hybrid model will also be the more powerful of the two options. So this total system for the hybrid model is going to be making 204 horsepower and 247 pound-feet of torque. Now, in terms of other aspects in the powertrain situation, uh, you're going to have an eCVT with the hybrid model, a CVT with the traditional gas-powered model, both of which are now going to have a shift simulation effect for a more traditional feel behind the wheel. We're also going to have standard front-wheel drive and available all-wheel drive across all the models, except for the Sport Touring, where all-wheel drive will be standard. Now, of course, since this is a first look, we're not going to be driving either of these models today. However, Honda does promise that it will be more fun to drive. So looking forward to testing it out on the street as soon as we can. So by the way, make sure to go down and subscribe to our channel so you'll see our full review as soon as that comes up. Now, let's also talk about pricing as well as availability. Obviously, there's no official pricing at this point. However, being a very competitive segment, I would anticipate that the prices will stay roughly in line with where they're at currently. However, just be aware you don't have an LX trim level anymore. So that is going to raise that base MSRP a little bit higher, almost certainly. Um, in terms of availability, you're not actually going to have to wait that long before you will be able to get one of these at a dealership. Honda says the EX and the EXL, so that's going to be the traditional gas powertrain, will be on sale this summer. And if you want the, wait, if you want the hybrid powertrain, you'll have to wait a little bit longer. Uh, that will be on sale a little later on in 2022. Well, guys, thanks so much for joining us on this first look of the all-new 2023 Honda CRV. Special thanks to Honda for inviting us up here to Detroit to check it out and show you guys. And if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you do us a favor and go down below and hit subscribe. Not only is that going to help us out, it's also going to give you uh, the, the availability of seeing all of our latest content as well as seeing when we do a full review of these new CRV models, both the traditional and the hybrid model, as soon as we can. Also, make sure you follow us on TikTok and Instagram if you're interested in seeing some more short form content. And come along with us again as we sample more of the latest automotive delicacies.